second. We're gonna help you. You're gonna have trouble raising this thing up. I mean, that's not exactly a bad place to be preaching from. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is James Kirtan. I'm from the Fountain Assembly of God. I was senior, and the message is going to be on the power of words. So words are unique. They're something we use every single day, every single situation. We're always using them, and we can see the power we have from our words. And it's something that's not addressed. It's addressed a lot in the Bible. I mean, just a couple examples of this is in uh, Matthew eight, uh, chapter yeah, Matthew eight. Verses 23 through 26, when all the disciples are, and Jesus are on a boat. This boat, they're just heading down the lake, and the storm comes in. Now, the disciples are experienced fishermen, and they are afraid of this storm. They think the storm is going to wreck their boat, and then most likely that boat is going to sink. So they wake up Jesus and say, and Lord, save us. We are going to drown. He replies, you little faith, why are you so afraid? And then he got up, rebuked the wind and waves, and it was completely calm. He, with just his words, was able to say to the elements, just be calm. And it was calm. Oh, it was. Then this just shows a little bit of power that words has. The second uh, chapter, um, in Luke uh, chapter 7, verse... Um, Seven through eight, the faith of centurion. We've heard the story plenty of times. The centurion, his servant's sick. He needs Jesus. And instead of coming to Jesus himself, he sends other messengers telling him that Jesus not he's not worthy to have Jesus come into his house. And he tells him that just by him saying the words that his servant will be healed. Just just by words. And so Jesus Jesus states. For I, uh, what the centurion says, For I myself as a man under authority, with soldiers under me, I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, turning to the crowd the follow, following him. He said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. And he spoke the words, and that servant was healed. It was completely miraculous, and just no laying on hands, just words. And so our words have this power. But unfortunately, the tongue cannot be tamed. We know this in uh, James chapter 3, verses 6 through 7. The tongue is, is also the tongue is also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, the whole body. It sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, and reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. We cannot tame this tongue by ourselves. We must have Jesus in our lives so we can be able to speak life into others. Because if we don't, we will be speaking death into the ones around us. The ones we love, the ones we interact with on a daily basis, and even the ones that we don't even know. Because we don't know those around us. We don't know what's truly in your thoughts, and maybe just a simple simple hello, a simple good word can change a life. But that also goes around the other way. A simple bad word, a somebody's having a bad day, and you bring them down just a little bit lower, that can have a massive effect. But with Jesus in our lives, we can make sure that that doesn't happen, that we are able to bring others up and make sure to, uh, to praise others to speak. And then with that, I just want to leave you with, with Jesus. We can speak life into others or we can speak death. Good job.